Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Just Designs. If you are new to my channel, hello, my name is Sammy. Today is Try It Tuesday. I cannot wait to show you who I was inspired by this past month. So let's go ahead and get started. Per usual, we're gonna start off with something simple. I got this at a garage sale for like a couple dollars. Totally thought that was rust, you guys. It's definitely food or something. Um, this had to have been up on like a shelf in a kitchen because it was so greasy. So I'm gonna clean all of this up off of camera and I'm gonna grab the Queen Bee Roy Cycle Decoupage paper that I am now carrying on my website. And right away when I saw this tray, I was like, this is gonna fit perfectly but y'all i'm cheap okay and although i sell it uh and i could get multiples of it i want to save every last scrap of this i can so i wanted to try and not cut onto that crown because i i didn't want to waste the image you know so i was working every way of like how can i do this but I ended up having to cut just a tad bit off of the bottom of the crown, but it, you guys, you guys know I'm cheap. Um, or I'm frugal, that's what I'll say. So I ended up putting the paper upside down and then flipping my tray over and all I'm doing is tracing it with a pencil. Now I like to leave a little bit of room around my trace line just because I rather have a little bit more extra paper than not enough to cover my surface. So this lines up absolutely amazing. I am going to grab, I, for whatever reason, I was using Big Top on the first two projects when I have my decoupage medium, which is liquid patina, but you, you know, I guess just use whatever is near you. And now you know that Big Top works as a decoupage medium too. So I, in, in full disclosure, I am not a pro at decoupage paper. I'm probably just as new as some of you that are wanting to get into it as well. So um, we will learn together. So I am taking a synthetic brush and I am coating the bottom and then whatever is left on that brush, I go ahead and I push that paper down with the excess of it. And I'm going to do this in small sections instead of swiping all it all of it on at once and laying my sheet down this will give me less wrinkles and the roy cycle papers are so easy to work with they're strong they're beautiful they're thin i perfecto all right so now that that's all dried i'm taking my finger sander and i'm going in downward motions to get all of that excess paper off then i'm going to go back on with the big top and put a clear coat to make sure all of my decoupage paper is there, that the sides are nice and down and there's no frays and that's it you guys. I wish I could have given you a better picture of like it as a tray, but I didn't have any <laughs> room big enough that was clean. But you can see how perfectly this fits onto this tray or riser and the black and the white, and then it does have a black base, and this will, I think, be available on my website for purchase if I don't keep it for myself. Comment with a B if you loved it. Hey everyone, just checking in on you. I hope you guys are enjoying this Try It Tuesday vi video. I hope you're enjoying the new decoupage paper. Again, I will be selling these on the website now, and I did just make another big order so i should be getting all of the new fall and christmas decoupage papers soon um just so you guys know the try it tuesday playlist is going to be down in the description box so whoever wanted to join this little kind of challenge with me um they are going to join the playlist so make sure to check it out because you might find some new creators that you have not seen before and i hope you guys are digging this video and you guys know the drill if you're digging me if you're digging the diys if you are digging the content, then please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. All of my links are down in the description box for my website, our Facebook group, and all my social media accounts. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get into the last project. Now getting into my inspiration. This is Sweet and Sassy Treasures, and she does the most epic 
tile pieces. And then there's also a mix of Roy Cycled in here as well. I've been learning a lot from her and I mainly follow her on TikTok and Sweet and Sassy on Facebook. So we are gonna use the new fall catalog page and oh my gosh, what endless amounts of projects you can do with this one sheet of decoupage paper. I'm gonna take, this as a random piece of scrap wood. I think it is like a maybe a two by eight. And I am going to place that over my decoupage paper, making sure to focus my birds towards the top because I am gonna put um, a trimming piece on the bottom. I trace that out and then I cut it. Then I'm just kind of showing you all the different ways you can kind of like use this paper, like that would fit perfectly on a two by four. So options are endless here. All right, so for the front of my piece of wood, I am going to go ahead and paint the entire thing with white swan so that my paper really pops. Now, something I learned from Roy Cycled was using stamps underneath your decoupage paper. So I'm getting the crackle stamp from IOD and I'm going to put that over my paint. Now, when I lay my decoupage paper on there, you're gonna see that coming through the paper. I thought this was such a great idea because like we could have added butterfly stamps, anything. So as I did in the beginning, I am taking a little bit of, I'm still using big top on this one and doing it in small sections, pushing down with any of my remnants. And you could see how easy that was to kind of lift up again and then start over. Now, as I put this down, you can already see the crackle stamp coming through that paper. And now it just looks a little bit more aged, which was what I was going for. But like I said, I mean, you can use any of the stamps and add your own twist on these papers too, which is really exciting. Now, after I'm done with that, I get all of the excess paper off and then I will put another top coat over our decoupage paper. I'm gonna grab letterpress and I'm gonna grab my salt wash. I'm gonna mix that up because I want this uh, tile block to almost look like a, it, like it was a pavement stone or I don't know, a brick or something like that. So with my chippy brush, I just am gonna stipple that on. You could already see all of that texture and what you create with your salt wash, that's exactly how it's going to dry down. It will not flatten down like baking soda would. Um, it creates these beautiful peaks and ridges. And I mean, possibilities are endless. So I keep on saying possibilities are endless, but they really are. So I do this to the all the sides and the back. And for the bottom, I just paint it with letterpress because I don't want any of that texture on the bottom. And you doesn't this color the letterpress dry down to look so much like cement? Mwah, chef's kiss. Okay, now I'm gonna take out my trimmings molds, my amazing resin, which cures in 10 minutes. And whenever I bring out my resin, I, uh, I just pour extra stuff to put in my desk. I was trying to use the rest of this bottle. So I just started pouring. Please use gloves. I have absolutely none right now at my house. So just do as I say, not as I do, but I'm gonna mix a bunch of them. Now I'm going to take, um, it was came from the sunflower mold and I'm gonna use, I started out with Fancy Farm Girl and then I switched it over on the second coat to Monet's Garden. But y'all, I give all the IOD people that hand paint their molds like with beautiful detail, so much props because I only use two colors on this thing and it took so much time to be very precise and detailed and not to get the paint like on other, I could not imagine doing this over and over again. Maybe when like my kids are grown and they don't come over anymore, I don't know. So I popped my trimming mold out before it was all the way cured. And I did that because I wanted to be able to take my craft knife and easily cut whatever excess off that I wanted to. So don't let it, see how it's like still bendable and pliable? That's what I was going for. So I am just measuring this on the bottom, 
cutting it down to the size that I wanted it to, and then it'll come right off. Um, going back to our mold, I am taking Kissing Booth. There was like this pinkish red color in the florals on this paper, and I wanted to bring that out with this beautiful Kissing Booth color. For the trimming, I'm taking Liquid Sunshine. The birds had this really bright yellow in their wings and their feathers, and I wanted to bring that out of the page as well. So after I'm done painting, I clear everything with Big Top. This is going to deepen the color of the DIY paints. And keep in mind, y'all, all the DIY paint products I'm using, you can find on my website, unicorndustdesigns.com, as well as the papers, obvi. Now I am taking black wax, and black wax isn't a wax that I use very often, but there was a bunch of black outlining in the paper and again, I've, I'm kind of going with the paper here. So I put that on, I wipe it back with a paper towel. And because I put that big top on first, it makes wiping back the wax super easy. And you could see how it just settles into all of the details, really makes everything pop. Now I'm gonna take my type on wood glue and we are going to attach our pieces. I like to use a paintbrush. I don't like, I don't like the feeling on my finger of this wood glue. So I just take a paintbrush, make sure it gets everywhere it needs to, and I'm gonna have that coming off the top. And you can see how it pulls that little pink right there. And then I'm gonna do the same for the trimming molds. Um, and I'm gonna put that on the bottom of our tile block. And you guys, this turned out so, so pretty. If you are a reseller, these are gonna be great items to put in your booth or on your website. They make beautiful gifts. And I think we're gonna do, cause I have another piece of wood, we're gonna do another one of these on the live for Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Central. I look at all of those details and how that looks like a stone. Look at, look at the detail. Look at the crackle coming through. Oh my word, this paper couldn't get any prettier. The molds couldn't either. Comment down below with a bird if you are going to try this tile piece out. I gotta tell you, I was so inspired by her tiles. You need to watch her videos. Now, our last one, I saw this and it's from Would You Bend and she decoupaged onto a piece of glass. And then this gal from Serendipity House, I will show you what I learned from her during this video as well. So I am going to use the red rooster decoupage paper and this is stunning. It almost looks like an old advertisement, kind of like an old receipt. There's so much going on in this piece of paper and so many different elements that you can cut off and use for different projects. But I'm gonna take this glass decorative window a gal, Lori, here local to me, she sold me all of this home decor stuff for like a dollar each, and this was in there, and this thing is like heavy duty. So I'm trying to find the placement, what I wanna do with it. I end up taking this apart and realizing there's two pieces of glass in here. So if somebody buys this and a year from now they're not into roosters, they can literally pop the decorative rooster piece off that I do and replace it with a different piece of art. So I'm gonna take this back piece off. We're gonna thoroughly clean it. Then I'm going to take the decoupage paper. I laid the um, glass pane on there, traced it, and then we're cutting it out. With any of my excess papers, I just fold it up and stick it in a bag. Um, the the lines when you fold it come out so easy with this paper that I'm not even worried about the fold lines whatsoever. So I laid the decoupage paper on to the window pane. That way I could really see what it looks like as I'm ripping parts of the pages out. And all I'm doing is taking a paintbrush with some water on it and going in random shapes, forms, I don't know, spots, um, because I want this to look almost like a worn old advertisement page. Um, so 
you can see there's no rhyme or reason for what I'm doing. I'm just going with the flow and hoping it all looks good after I'm done. I even like take out like a big chunk in the middle. So just have fun with it. Maybe less is more for you, but I was like more, more, more. All right. So now I'm going to take my smoothie brush and please tell me why I've never used the smoothie brush for decoupaging because it makes the work so easy. So I'm taking the brush and then I learned also from watching Royd Cycled is she spritzes her decoupage paper with water. And please tell me, you know the things that you've seen a million times and it takes you forever to try it because this really cuts back on the wrinkles like a lot. So again, doing this in sections, I go on the glass itself I spritz that section with water and then I push it down with my smoothie brush. The width of this brush made this project so easy to do. And I'm gonna keep repeating that process as we go up. Now, there is, I think, like two harsh lines that I created kind of like in the middle of this. But other than that, I really did not get any wrinkles on this piece. So once that um, is semi dry, this first layer, I'm going to go back over it with the decoupage medium liquid patina. That's what I'm using on this project. And I'll go back over it and then I'm going to let it completely or not complete. I let the paper dry. No, I don't. So what I'm doing is I put that on and then I had saw the serendipity gal when she does paint inlays with um, a clear medium, she takes rubbing alcohol and that rubbing alcohol, she will rub on the glass to get all of that like film off. And that's what I did here. I just took a microfiber cloth, 90% or something alcohol, and I'm buffing that liquid patina off of my glass so that it's crystal clear again. Now I'm just going to paint the frame. So I'm using little black dress painted that, and then I'm dry brushing marquee on there. Like you could hardly even see it. That's how light of a coat. I just want it to look like a little bit of chippy paint, not much. And then I'm going to clear and seal our paint with the big top. This is also going to deepen your color. You can also use black wax, which I'm kind of like, Ooh, why didn't I think of that when I was doing it? But we're going to take this outside now, actually the decoupage part. This is completely dry. I'm going to take the mirror effect spray paint, rot her. And we are going to give this one coat focusing on the glass parts, obviously that we ripped out. Now you can even do paint. You don't even have to do the mirror effect. You can dab on different color paints, whatever. And it starts drying right away. You can see on the right, it's already starting to mirror. You could do several coats, but I only do one. Now I've done this on my, my channel before. And previously I used vinegar to distress the mirror effect. However, I was like, you know what? I wonder if nail polish remover will be easier to use because the vinegar, you had some elbow grease. So you can see that was my first spot trying the nail polish remover. And I thought I was going to have to push really hard, but all you had to do was dab it. And it was starting to take off that mirror effect, which is exactly what I wanted. Now I'm going to go in with the metallic gold by rust -Oleum, spray over that, let it completely dry. And then I'm going to pop it back into my window frame and it's going to be done. This turned out really pretty. I was happy with the, the rippage of the paper and how it looked. I definitely think I got the old, like, what do you call it? The old antique look. And there's still so much of that paper and for your eye to look at. So I hope you guys enjoyed these decoupage DIYs. Please make sure to look down below to see who joined Try It Tuesday this month. And again, all of the products are available on my website, unicorndustdesigns.com. Oh, I 
love this. This looks so good, you guys. You can really see like the gold popping through. Looks like an old mirror and then the paper. Yes, ma'am. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope you all have a fabulous week and I can't wait to be back on Thursday with Thrifted Thursday and then Saturday with another new DIY video. All right, we're gonna try it this way. It's hot, but my house is loud, so. We're coming out here, still wishing I was in there, but this is our side. Wow, 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 there's that. You guys, I'm still wearing my pajama shirt. Okay. So, you know, the kids are home. I'm working. It's fine. It's fine.